you would be pretty crazy to say that you don't want more performance and lower latency from your gaming PC. So the rather bold claims from Atlas OS sound awfully appealing. They say Windows is slow, clunky and unreliable, and more potently, f Windows. Upgrade to Atlas. They say it's designed for gamers with improved in-game frame rates and lowered latency. Those are some bold claims, but luckily I built an open source latency testing tool so we can put those claims to the test. Installing Atlas OS involves you fresh installing Windows. Yeah, it isn't a custom Linux based OS or even a custom Windows image. This is stock Windows with some packages removed. Once Windows is installed, you'll need to download both the playbook and the AME wizard. Run the wizard and import the Atlas OS playbook. The first thing that it will tell you to do is to fully disable Windows security. That is a pretty big red flag, but we'll come back to that in a second. Once all of the security is disabled, you can continue to install. It'll ask you to configure some options, starting with if you want to keep Windows Defender enabled or disable it, such that you'll need to use Atlas's tools to re-enable it later. They say keeping it on is recommended, and I would agree. Next is disabling security mitigations, namely things like Spectre and Meltdown. Again, they now recommend leaving them as is. Next is a recommendation to disable core isolation. Now, this is more relevant to Windows 11, as core isolation is enabled by default there and is considerably more feature rich. Atlas themselves list out the, the possible features depending on your hardware and well Windows version, including memory integrity, which is actually available in Windows 10, credential guard, the vulnerable driver blacklist, firmware protection, memory access protection, and kernel mode hardware enforced stack protection. It's a pretty useful set of features, although if you're running Windows 10, there's a very good chance that you already are not using it as it's not enabled by default, so it shouldn't be that big a deal to switch it off in Windows 11 for potentially a decent chunk of extra performance. Next is a recommendation to move Edge, a pretty sound choice if I say so myself, disable Bluetooth, much less sound, and disable power saving. At least that one makes sense. Lastly, you need to pick a browser. Brave is the default choice, then Waterfox, a Firefox fork, and then Chrome. I find these options quite funny. They picked Waterfox over Firefox because privacy, and then give you the option to use Chrome. Not Chromium, Chrome. That's kind of funny. Anyway, once you've picked your browser, it begins the install. Or, well, I should actually say clear out more than anything, as almost all that this is doing is nuking a bunch of Windows packages. Once it's done, it restarts Windows, and that's the installation complete. It's worth noting that if you ever want to revert back to fully stock Windows, you'll need to reinstall the OS. You can undo a few of their changes with the included scripts, but you can't revert everything without a fresh install. Still, it's hard to argue that it doesn't feel snappier instantly. I think they disable the animations, which means everything feels a fair bit more sort of abrupt and jarring, but undeniably more rapid. So now we have it installed, let's run some tests. I'm going to reuse Rainbow Six Siege here, and I'm testing stock Windows 10 against the Atlas OS afflicted version of the same image. Both are fresh installs. I did want to use a sort of dirty copy that I've been using for benchmarking for a while, but unfortunately there's a bug somewhere in that, you know, setup uh, that means Siege won't run in its Vulkan mode, which as I found out in my Rainbow Six Siege Latency Guide, video in the cards above if you're interested, makes a massive difference, so it's fresh versus fresh. That's a fair bit more fair anyway, so let's have a look. So what are the results? Well, Siege's built-in benchmark reckons that there is 
functionally no difference. Atlas is running at 444 FPS average and 403 FPS in the 1% lows, versus stock Windows running at 444 FPS average and 401.5 FPS in the 1% lows. Hardly the deal of the century. But what about latency? Well, I strapped my open source latency testing tool to the display and got to test it. Those results were functionally identical to Atlas OS averaged 11.3 milliseconds and stock windows scraped ahead at just 11.2. <laughs> Literally nothing in it. So how can they claim that stripping out a load of the bloat from windows will give you better performance and lower latency? In short, it mostly depends on your hardware. I'm using a relatively modern system here. It's an i5 13600K and an RTX 3070 Ti and testing at 1440p. So of course, removing a couple of things from running in the background won't make much of a difference because even in this more CPU limited game, it still isn't actually CPU limited or at least total CPU usage limited. On lower end or older hardware, you are at least a little more likely to see benefit from disabling those background tasks. It's also worth noting that a lot of their claimed performance figures, which to their credit, they lay out exactly how they tested it, were tested on Windows 11. 11, thanks to the increased security features like core isolation, can take a much bigger toll on your performance than on Windows 10. Essentially, Windows 11 is generally worse for gaming, and it makes tools like Atlas OS more of a necessity. So you should use Atlas OS then, right? Well, probably not. And there's a few reasons why. First is the security concerns. There are the obvious things like disabling Windows Defender is a generally dumb idea, and more sort of subtle things like disabling the Spectre meltdown mitigations, which for your average gamer really isn't likely to be a problem, but is also a sign of what's clearly on the table in terms of tweaks to get the best possible performance. I think it's important to mention though that the current version of Atlas OS, version 0.3.1, is wildly different from the older versions, including the versions that you'll find most of the discussions around Atlas OS are based on. Earlier versions were much more aggressive in removing everything and anything they thought looked like targets for performance or telemetry. They fully removed Windows Defender irreversibly, they bricked Bluetooth support, and a whole host of other things that mostly meant anyone running their tweaks just made their PC very, very insecure and vulnerable. The most recent version is much more refined, and their recommendations seem to have shifted to more sensible choices. Defender is left alone, at least by default, mitigations are left in place, and only core isolation is disabled, something that isn't even enabled by default on Windows 10, and is a much more limited version, so generally that's no big deal. Changes like Defender are also reversible, using the scripts they provide in the Atlas folder. You can leave Defender enabled for you know, the majority of your usage and then just disable it to eke out the most performance when you're actually playing games and then switch it back on once you're finished to be protected again. That's much better than just nuking it from orbit for good. The problem with this tamer iteration is that it then doesn't stand out from any of the other Windows debloat scripts that have been around for years. The Windows 10 script that I use on my system is dated from 2017 and gives you granular control of every feature and tweak. Want to disable telemetry, the advertising ID and Cortana, but leave Defender alone? No problem. It even does things like uh, allow you to set Windows Explorer to open to this PC instead of quick access, a feature that I cannot live without. It'll even install the Linux subsystem, and this one is from 2017. There are a load of scripts and tools 
just like this one, with many of them even giving you the option to revert some of the things if you'd like. So why would you use the one that doesn't give you that granular control over what it's doing to your system? The other problem is that Microsoft basically makes a de-bloated version of Windows already. It's called the LTSC, or Long Term Servicing Channel version, and it has a considerably longer support timeline. It doesn't come with any bloatware installed, and of course, I benchmarked it. Frame rates were pretty much the same, at 442 FPS average, and a little lower on the 1% lows at 393 FPS, but it was running a slightly different version or build of Windows to the other two, as this is a little slower to get updates, so I'd call that good enough, it's just 2% slower there. As for the latency, again that's pretty much identical at 11.4 milliseconds versus 11.3 and 11.2 on Atlas and stock Windows respectively. Hell, you can still run a PowerShell script like the one I use on this version if you'd like to take the tweaking even further. So to summarize this lot then, Atlas OS isn't your only option for tweaking your Windows installation, and I'd argue that its more closed off options give you less control than the numerous other choices available. Atlas OS markets itself as, well, an OS. It proudly proclaims, fuck Windows, upgrade to Atlas, and that Windows is slow, clunky, and unreliable, but especially in its most recent iteration, it's just a fresh install of Windows with a few tweaks. I couldn't find any performance gains, but if you do, let me know what hardware and games you're running in the comments below. Personally, if you want the de-bloated Windows experience, install the LTSC version instead. It comes straight from Microsoft with most of these tweaks pre-done for you, and even comes with a much longer support window too. Better yet, clean up your current install and run one of those debloat scripts to tweak everything to your heart's content. I'll link the one that I use in the description if you're interested. Equally, if you're interested in testing latency of games, displays, and peripherals, you can pick up an OSLTT unit at osrtt.com. I build them by hand at my desk downstairs, so they're actually made in the UK. Of course, if you want to see more videos like this one, you can also hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon, and check out plenty of other videos on the end cards when they pop up in a second. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments, or head over to our Discord and chat there, and that's kind of it. You can also support the channel in a load of different ways through Amazon, Overclock, GK affiliate links listed in the description, and a load of other stuff, including merch hoodies or t-shirts like this one, if you're interested. But otherwise, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, we'll see you all in the next video.